This is Jupiter Today for the 29th of January, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant one, heading east, getting pretty close to its eastern elongation. Europa starts the day in quadrant four, heading east. Ganymede spends most of the day in quadrant four, heading east. And Europa and Callisto spends all day in quadrant four, heading east. At six hours UTC, it has passed its eastern elongation and is now firmly in quadrant two, heading west. Europa continues in quadrant four, as well as Ganymede and Callisto. 12 hours UTC, EO is very nearly going to be transiting pretty soon, going into quadrant 3, heading west. You can see that Europa is going to be moving behind Jupiter. And 1800 hours, EO is now firmly in quadrant 3, heading west. And Europa has successfully moved behind Jupiter. And Ganymede is following now, just about to move behind Jupiter. And by zero hours UTC, EO has just gone past its western elongation, and is in quadrant four, now heading east. And Europa and Ganymede have both moved behind Jupiter and are now both in quadrant one, heading east. This is a new segment in the podcast. I'm going to be showing the apogeos and perigeos for the four Galilean moons. In this particular case, this is the distance between Io and Jupiter along this axis, and this is the UT time along this axis. And as you can see, Io is getting closer and closer to Jupiter and then it reaches a closest point which is the perigeove and that's happening about 1040 UTC at a distance of 419,996.8 kilometers Europa also goes through a perigeove today that one happens at 1010 UTC at a distance of 665,006.4 kilometers. And Ganymede goes through its apogeove at about 1930 UTC at a distance of 1,073,140.3 kilometers. And Callisto is slowly moving towards its Apogeove, but today it's just moving further and further away from Jupiter. The other feature that I'm highlighting now is what I call orbital ribbons, and it's all I've done in this case. We're looking down on the Jupiter system, and these are the four Galilean moons. The geometry is slightly different here. Zero hours is here and goes this way, and this way, and this way, and this way for the four moons. And it's all I've done is at the same times I've connected those points, and it makes these interesting ribbons that sometimes twist. The black dot in the center is the position of Jupiter. So this is the connection between Io and Europa. And here's Io and Ganymede. And Io and Callisto. And then we have Europa and Ganymede. Just a nice sheet there. Looks like a ribbon. And Europa and Callisto. 
twisted ribbon there. And Ganymede and Callisto. And I've added them all up to make an interesting looking structure. Our brains take this two-dimensional information and give it a 3D look to it. Now again, this is looking down on the Jupiter system. I can insert the orbits and the position of Jupiter back in. And you can see that there's the orbits looking down. What I can also do is I can change the angle that we're looking at this from. And I can do things like that. Okay, well there are eight Jupiter satellite events today. First is at 12.01 when the shadow of EO ingresses. At 12.13, EO begins its transit of Jupiter. At 14.15 UTC, EO moves into the sh Europa moves into the shadow of Jupiter. At 14.17, the shadow of EO egresses. At 14.30 UTC, the transit of EO ends. At 17.13, Europa reappears from behind Jupiter. At 19.13 UTC, Ganymede moves into the shadow of Jupiter. And at 23.41, Ganymede reappears from behind Jupiter. And there are three satellite mutual events today. The first one goes from 1431 to 1434, and that's when EO is going to occult Europa. This is a 3.6 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.626 magnitudes. Unfortunately, it's only three quarters of an arc second away from the edge of Jupiter. So witnessing this event will be very difficult, but the geometry is interesting because EO is going to be on the near side of Jupiter and Europa is on the far side of Jupiter. So it may be worth observing and as you can see from the Google Earth map this is the location on the Earth where Jupiter will appear at the zenith at the time of this event and so this gives a map of the visibility and as you can see the western Pacific region a lot of Asia and a lot of Australia is going to be able to see this event the next event goes from 1610 to 1616 UTC, and that's when EO eclipses Ganymede. That's a 6.2 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.313 magnitudes. And Ganymede is 45.67 arc seconds from Jupiter, and EO and Ganymede are 11.88 arc seconds apart. And again, you'll be able to see this from a lot of Asia, and a lot of Australia and the Western Pacific. And the third event today goes from 1638 to 1642 UTC. And as expected, that's when EO is going to occult Ganymede. It's a 4.4 minute event with a fairly deep drop in magnitude, 0.642. And EO and Ganymede are going to be 40.41 arc seconds from Jupiter. And again, visibility, most of Asia, most of Australia, Western Pacific. Okay, 24 hours of Jupiter sky. You can see Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto all sort of piled up there in quadrant four. trying to give as many perspectives on viewing Jupiter as I can. Here goes Ganymede and Europa. It's an event that no human eye will ever witness. Maybe someday. I'm 
there's EO coming out of transit. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian twice today, the first at 5.55 UTC and the second at 15.51 UTC. There were no new images and no new radio data and no new papers. At zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on the celestial sphere is a right ascension of 9 hours, 25 minutes, 13.2 seconds, and a declination of positive 16 degrees, 9 minutes, 24.9 seconds. The angular separation between the Sun and Jupiter, as seen from Earth, continues to get larger and larger as we move towards opposition in just a few days now. Angle today is 169.911 degrees, and that's 1.14 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The phase angle, which is the angular separation between the Earth and Sun, as seen from Jupiter, today has dropped below 2 degrees. It's 1.853 degrees and that's 0 0.207 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The distance also continues to get less and less but not as fast anymore. We're at 651,804,501 kilometers and that's 413.456 413, kilometers less than what it was yesterday. That gives a relative velocity between the Earth and Jupiter of 17,235.67 kilometers per hour, and that's 1,933.08 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The distance between the Sun and Jupiter continues to get longer every day. Today it's 797,282,689 kilometers, and that's 46,535 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a relative velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,938.96 kilometers per hour moving away from one another, and that's 5.87 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. At zero hours UTC, the central meridian, CM1, 319.84 degrees, CM2, 34.05 degrees, CM3, 300.51 degrees. The time of this recording is zero hours, 12 minutes UTC on the 29th of January, 2015. So please subscribe and thank you for subscribing. Please tell everyone you know about this podcast. I hope it's interesting and useful and gives an interesting perspective on the very dynamic Jupiter system, which is constantly changing. Not only the orbital changes, but also the weather changes on Jupiter, which is a project that I would like to get started with, trying to monitor the weather patterns on Jupiter, create a database of observations, and see what happens. I'll have more information about this uh, coming up soon. All right, well, thanks for listening today, and you can send your comments and images to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.